Hi right, guys, Jordan from PNP Campers. Just going to do your handover video on your auto sleeper Harmony. So, M Reg vehicle, um, chassis plate there saying 2.8 tons. Uh, engine battery over on the left hand side. Brake fluid attached to the servo down the back, sits up there with a the blue top. Power steering fluid sits in the rear as well, just at the front. You can see there, perfect level. Um, should be a nice kind of red colour. The engine oil dipstick is this orange topped one just there at the top. Uh, and your actual engine oil filling point is that one just there. Uh, this is a petrol engine. You've got nice new spark plugs throughout. All the leads going down the nice channels. Um, over to the distributor. The throttle and the throttle body just down there um the engine coolant sits up here in this reservoir and you can see the engine's cold at the moment and it's at the maximum point so that's absolutely fine air filter sits inside this box over here on the right and your washer fluid goes in the reservoir on the right just next door to that um, your fuel filling point is this one just inside here you just push on this one side here to open it up um inside the one second inside the passenger door if i can open it <laughs> not much to show inside of here really um fire extinguisher down here it does look quite old so i can't imagine that would have passed unless there's another one um but yeah so like i said there's not much to show on the near side or the passenger side uh same for here to be honest i'll, I'll get into the uh, majority of the inside of the vehicle when we get in uh, on the other side toilet cassette locker obviously quite important um it's a fresh water flush that you've got on here so as long as you've got some water in the fresh tank you'll be able to flush the toilet um to actually get it to come out push down on this little yellow flap here pull it all the way out once you've got it out you can turn this and then drain it out from here when you're physically draining it out, you should be holding down the little yellow button there that's at the back. The only other thing to keep on top of is lubricating this little rubber seal here with a kind of silicon lubricant. You can silica uh, silicon spray around that and any of these rubber seals around any locker around the vehicle as well. Down underneath this side, you've got your wet, fresh water drain off point. Not much to show at the back. On the off side, we've got your fridge vents here. So if you've got the fridge lit up on gas, you should feel a little bit, not much, but just a little bit of warm air coming out through this little vent just here. Hookup point. So that's where your hookup cable goes into. Um, your wastewater drain off point is the gray one just down there. This is your boiler vent, so the Carver Cascade 2. Freshwater inlet point, which you can also lubricate with the same silicon lubricant around the rubber seal inside there. And that is about it for the sort of external bits and pieces. The cab itself is pretty straightforward, if I'm honest. Um, you've got your high beam, low beam lights there, and your flash is on there as well. Indicators are on the left-hand side on the front here. Washers and wipers are on the right-hand stalk. You can see there's 60,000 miles, which really for one of these engines isn't a lot at all. Uh, fog lamp, uh, your headlight adjustment, and your headlights on and off, so side lights, main lights um, I think that switch just there should probably be a isolator for the radio the radio front is probably in the there you go yeah. so we've got the radio front inside here it's a pioneer one five speed manual gearbox the bonnet release handle is just there underneath the steering wheel and that is about it really for in the cab so, 
So we get into the back. Um, I'm gonna start off up here, just inside the back door. Um, so it's a Zig control panel. So you can see there, a nice auto sleeper stamped Zig unit. These Zig um, control panels are really, really simple to use and very reliable. Um, all you need to know about them really is that you've, where it says fuses just here. If you pop this little panel off, you've got six blade fuses inside there, which all do different bits and pieces. Um, does tell you what numbers do what. Um, there, if the original paperwork is in the vehicle from the original sale, then it should have t a little diagram telling you what one does what. Um, but you can probably find out anywhere really. If I get that in the right way around. God, don't drop it. Which way around does that go then? I can't remember which way I've already tried. <laughs> this is typical on the video. Right, I'll sort that out after the video in a minute. Right, so the only other bits you've got really is you've got a read button, which is basically a test switch um, for your fresh water level and your battery voltage. So if I press and hold on that, it's telling us the battery voltage is good and we're pretty much empty on the fresh tank. Um, you've got the main on and off 12 volt switch here. So that'll then give us access to using any of the 12 volt lights, any ignition, um, basically anything that works via the 12 volt. So that would be including your heating, the boiler, all that sort of stuff. Um, even though it runs on gas, it still lights up with 12 volt power. And the last one is your pump. So when you turn that button on there, the pump starts pressurizing the system and you'll get water coming to the taps. Um, and so the last, the last bit that's on the control panel is this little bit here that says charger on. So that's not a button, it's actually just a green light. So essentially, if you plug the hookup cable into the vehicle and you want to double check that it's definitely on and working, you should have a little green light here telling you that it's plugged in and working. Um, so that is that. It's... I just want to show you how easy this is, but uh, there you go. <laughs> I can't believe how long that took me to do it. So pop it in there. With these little with the little bit just there so this side goes in first underneath and then hook it in there you go <laughs> it's not it's not as hard as it as i made it look um right so the next bit i'll show you the fridge so it's a three-way fridge at the moment i've got the fridge lit up on gas um the way that i can definitely know that is by opening the door up and having a look down this little peep hole here so that you can see a little blue flame. You can also see the condensation building up on the screen there. That's because it's on. So to actually light it up on gas, I'm going to turn it off quickly so I can show you it from scratch. So all you've got really is an ignition switch. So press that button on there. You can see the light flashing. And if you're actually here in person, you can hear it clicking as well. So that's igniting. To actually get it to light up, we need to push in and around on this dial here. Straight away, the igniter stops and the flame is on at the back. So I can hold onto this just for a minute and then let go. As long as that igniter doesn't come back on again, the fridge is lit. All right, so that's how you light it up on gas. That will take about two or three hours to get the fridge cold. So if I want to turn it off. That's all you have to do. So that's how you do it on gas. That's one way of getting the fridge cold by itself. The other way to get the fridge cold by itself is the 240 volt or the hookup. So if you've got the hookup cable plugged in, you can press the green switch just there. And after the same amount of time, two, three, maybe even four hours, your fridge will be nice and cold. Um, so that's how you can do it on the hookup. The only other way that you can use the fridge, you have to pre-cool it first, either via the gas or the mains. But then when you start the engine up and start driving, you can press the red switch there and that'll keep whatever temperature you've put into the fridge already in the fridge there like that. So it just uses the engine's power basically to keep the fridge cold. So that is how you use the three-way fridge. Um, the sink, the same as the bathroom ones, is literally just a hot and cold mixer tap. Uh, so I don't feel like I need to show you how to use that. Nice and simple. You can close the cupboard there completely like that 
the cooker just as easy as anything else um, it's a very early spin flow unit so you've got the grill underneath and an ignition switch here which does both burners and the grill so if you want to light up either of the burners you've got the left hand one here and the right hand one at the top and the grill is the one in the middle so you basically just press and hold on the igniter switch and light it up whichever one you want to do so again that is super easy um, to close this down lift that bit up and then oh, a bit easier with two hands fold that bit down there and then you can close it over in this little cupboard that i've dropped down here a bit of a random place to put it but it must be where they've put it from standard um if the camera will focus on it you've got the carver water heater switch in there all right so all you have to do to turn it on is make sure that you've got water in the boiler just by literally pulling the tap and making sure there's water coming out the hot tap and then come in here press the button on the right it will come up saying power on and it will light up and that is all you have to do all right that is it after about half an hour or so you have hot water coming through the taps so that's that one in there on the same subject of the hot water if you want to use the boiler on electric and you don't want to use the gas you can come down to this little cupboard down here and in this cupboard there's a couple of bits i need to show you anyway um but these two switches over on the left hand side the one on the left there says battery charger you can leave that one on all the time um so that basically when you plug the hookup cable in the battery charger will be switched on straight away so you can leave that one in the on position but the one to the right just there is your hot water on electric so if you wanted to use the hot water on electric on you know when your hookups plugged in you can just literally switch that on you'll get a little red light and then after again about half an hour you'll have hot water coming through the taps the one on the right there is your trip switches so again this is all hookup stuff but if you did have the electric hookup plugged in you can check those over there and make sure they're all in the upright position and down here you should have there you go so you've got a nice new water pump in there so we needed to re replace that as part of the, the habitation check so a nice new spin uh, shore flow um water pump and your actual battery charger itself so if you ever needed to get to either of those things they're just down there nice and easily to get to um you can isolate the battery isolator uh, battery charger there if you want to um, but you shouldn't have to because you've got the actual isolator dial there for you so that's what's down there in that cupboard the cupboard to the right of this one this one just here you'll see there gas tap status um, so you've got all of your back, your gas isolators down here. So you, at the top there, you've got the two burner and grill, heater, water heater, and fridge. So if you wanted to isolate the gas from any of those appliances specifically and individually, you can do it from there. The next appliance is your Propex gas heating. So the heating itself is gas only. There's no electric functionality on the heating. It couldn't really be much easier, in my opinion. The Propex heating is really reliable and really simple to use. All you have to do, if you want just fan only, so no heating, but just a you know blown air, push once to the right. And out of the little vents down here, or one of them, you'll just get just air, literally just a fan pumping around cool air. If you go back to the middle again and press to the left, the flame will light up. And after not very long at all, you'll start getting hot air pumping out through the same vent. So that is literally all you have to do. As long as your gas is switched on, you come up here, push left for heating, push right for just fan. All right, back to the middle, turns it off. Um, bathroom. So the skylight up there, I think that the inner pit was, was all torn up and broken before i think so that's been sorted um the sink was also broken it had a big split in the back of it so i've taken this off um, and fiberglass the back of it 
I know this isn't exactly the right color, but uh, it was the closest we had in uh, silicon. But basically, yeah, like I said, I've uh, fixed the back of this, this whole thing, so it's nice and strong in there now, so it shouldn't crack again. Um, but yeah, so I've covered up the crack there and sealed it all up. So that's the sink in there. The toilet, like I said, um, has a fresh water flush. To drain it into the cassette, you twist this, and that opens up the flap there, close it back over. And if you want to actually flush the toilet, the pump switch needs to be on, and then you basically just push this button down, like that. That'll start pumping the water around as soon as you turn the pump switch on. Uh, and yeah, that is about it, really. Um, nice and simple on that front. When you finish using the pump, it's always a good idea to turn it off. Um, you don't want it to run on for too long and start to heat up. In the main wardrobe here, you've got table in there. Uh, there is also another table just behind here as well. You've got your aerial point along with a 12 volt socket and a mains socket there as well. And I think the last bit to show you is the gas. So the gas locker is a properly metal lined locker there. Uh, so it's all up to regulation. Um, so all you need to know really is that you turn it all the way around to the right to turn the bottle off. So that's now off and turning it to the left turns it on. So clockwise round to the right turns it off, anti-clockwise round to the left turns it on. So I'm going to leave that off for now because you need to turn it off before you start driving. Um, lots of nice storage over the cab along with your awning winder in there. I don't think there's much else to show to be honest it's quite a short video but uh, it's a small van so uh, you know to be expected I guess um, so if there's anything you think I've missed out or anything you'd like going over again just let us know um, but otherwise we look forward to seeing you soon to catch your van thanks very much